All right, so we are here with Tushar Vashish, the CEO and founder of Healthify Me, uh, the hottest um, health tech startup in India and soon to be the world. Thanks for the hype, uh, Bala. <laughs> Tushar, can you top that up hype a little bit more uh, yourself and the company? Uh, look, we're just trying to get people to choose um, healthy choices um, and a more active lifestyle. Uh, you know, we are. Yes, we've helped 30 million Indians healthify themselves. And only 30 million? <laughs> yeah, only, only 30. But we're trying to get the, the world to be a healthier and a fitter place. Our, goal, our mission is to healthify a billion and do that by creating both AI and human-powered uh, behavioral change nudges uh, to lifestyle. Tushar, I would love to get into more detail on that. But before that, this whole AI thing, is it like a, is it hype? Is it real? I think it's hyper real. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, you know, I think... Uh, I think it's it's beyond real. I think six months ago you had like the the believers and then the bystanders, and right now I think it's just it's a reality for everybody. And it reminds I think people have compared it with fire, with electricity, with internet, with whatnot, right? But at least in my lifetime, um, the entire evolution we saw with mobile and apps creations, etc., that were possible. I think a whole new world of possibilities, new business models are going to be now possible, uh, and uh, and I think AI will help us create that. Uh, you know, fundamentally. So I think access, affordability um, to various types of applications are going to be now feasible. Uh, and so, yeah, it is more than real. It is, it is hyper real. <laughs> All right, Hi, hyper real. Awesome. Can you talk about uh, a couple of things that your team has been working on uh, that will be excited, that you're excited about? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Healthify has always been a nutrition, we started off being a calorie counting nutrition tracking app, right? The the paradigm of Healthify was that you kind of take your phone and you type what foods you've eaten and what does it mean in terms of the nutritional value. So with Healthify was, you could only type into it, but now Healthify can see it can and listen with AI. So you know, a feature called Snap by which you can take photos and it'll convert that into nutrition and calories values. That's cool. Yeah. It's going live later this week. So you right. just take a photo and forget about it, right? Fire and forget. Of anything? Any of, any food? Indian any food? Any food, Indian food. Dosas? Dosas. And, you know, it'll, it'll figure out if it is food or not. And if it is, it'll track it for you. You know, you can also end up day just speaking to the phone, just like to a friend, right? Like, look, I had two dosas. I went for a walk. I did this and that. And that's your tracking. So you don't have to kind of go through that clunky way of a user interface typing away, which resulted in drop-offs earlier. Second is that we are completely refactoring our AI coach, Ria, to become this, you know, generative Ria. Uh, and, and so I do believe that for most of our questions, our responses to our customers on health, nutrition, fitness can be real-time, can be so much more robust, more comprehensive um, than it was possible earlier. So, you know, our coaches can truly do the job of what humans excel at which is providing motivation and providing accountability. So in better for customers, better for coaches, and it's going to be quite game-changing when we release this Ria 2.0 in the next few months. So it's kind of like a co-pilot for, for your coaches. It's both a co-pilot for the coaches and for our customers. You know, So even customers can directly deal with Ria about their health and fitness, day-on-day day queries. You know, how much should I eat? Where should I go? Should I run this? Should I, what kind of a meal plan should I get? A workout plan should I get? All these are any kind of tooling that you require can and should be done by AI because it understands your context, your data, your preferences, your location far much better. And the coach can really be there. So it can be like an assistant coach, right? So you speak to the assistant coach for your daily needs and you really talk to the coach for a check-in, you know, almost like a personal board member uh, for your health and fitness, right? But your, you know, your, your CEO, your CFO, your CTO and all can be your... Uh, can be your, uh, your, 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 can be Ria. Yeah. Now, uh, how would, so do you think that your coach can now do much, many more uh, people? I mean, like, where does the role of human beings in all of this? This is the biggest sort of a billion dollar question. Everyone's yeah, asking about it's, AI. it's funny because a few months ago, we talked about the, the case for humans, you know, and nobody thought that we'll ever think about that. But at the same time, I think there's a very strong case for humans, at least in our application, because humans provide, coaches provide motivation and accountability, as I was saying, which uh, AI cannot. Right? It'll be hard for an AI to keep you accountable. You don't feel as accountable to an AI as you do to a human coach and also to be as motivating to you, therefore, to keep your objectives right. Empathy are areas where humans excel at. Um, when a human says, I know or I understand, it's very different than when an AI says, I know or I understand. So I think emotional, empathetic, motivation and accountability are areas where coaches will still shine. But what should I eat? Give me a plan, a workout series, if this is good for me, bad for me. Here and now, data type questions are, or uh, usual conversational stuff is what, informational stuff is where AI is going to just 
fully take over so therefore yes a coach should be able to ideally handle a many more number of times of clients than we do today we handle about 200 clients to a coach perhaps the day is not far when a coach can efficiently handle a thousand clients oh my god that can probably change the business it changes the business model it provides access and affordability as well right so you can price it very differently a much greater number of consumers can now therefore have can access our paid subscribers and services um you know are there are totally about if you have to help the 5 billion people fundamentally there are no more than about a million qualified professional uh professionals in the world nutritionist trainers physiotherapists combined right order of magnitude is million so you need that thousand factor if you want to actually help the 5 billion and this makes it a reality wow that is phenomenal and i'm glad to hear that we human beings still have a role in this world we'll always do <laughs> it's just we'll have greater leverage of what we can do awesome so it looks like uh, you know ai can sort of take the grunge and the drudgery work yes. off so yes. that we can do the cool and more yes. emotional interesting absolutely. stuff absolutely phenomenal um changing gears a little bit one thing that people have been using ai for is productivity right um do you see that in your programming uh, sure. coders half our code is written by ai today wow the majority of our designs are done by ai for marketing um significant part of our content today is done by ai even marketing campaigns are organized and brainstormed with an ai for sure like even if i have to me and our you know head of marketing had to organize some marketing campaign the other day we obviously use you know a, a generative ai tool for brainstorming of what that should look and feel like and then cutting it to various cohorts right so okay this is a great campaign idea now let's transform it to like diabetics for hypertensive for overweight people for people who are already fit in the journey or in this that and you know other journeys so it can also make it much more relatable to a fast variety of audiences it's a huge productivity enhancer summarizing meetings um the cool thing was the other day i walked into a meeting i was a bit late which sometimes i am sadly and you know somebody was like you know what has happened so far and be like you know here's here's a two paragraph summary to catch you up to speed <laughs> you know and uh, whatever has happened so far you know he said this 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 said this is the core outcome so far uh, let's we can now continue so this is you know it's pretty incredible uh, i think it's probably made us twice as productive is what i would like to say wow twice productive wow that is that is phenomenal yeah. um now we talked about some of your longer term plans what do you see as the sig- uh, as the bigger roadblocks to achieving your dreams pace of technology change is very rapid i think we do there is a case for um the the tech world stabilizing around the various possibilities you know you're kind of sometimes i'm unsure of like you know for example customer support is an area I'm, i've been unsure of diving in with ai because you know there is a better pr- provider of a service coming out in an app every few weeks so i think the pace of change is very high i wanted to see it stabilize at some point for developers to grasp it um also fundamentally the generative technology is non deterministic right so it is great what do you mean by that i mean for an example you know if you ask uh give me something motivating given my condition it will give a very great creative response but if you ask the same question again it would say something totally different you know like it it might give me a motivational quote next time it might make me like want to go outside and run so it's not as predictable necessarily so while for companies like us that's not as material because we are not hardcore healthcare precision companies right any kind of response is welcome but still you need some level of reliance as a business provider or as a as an engineer so i think how do you maneuver the technology for driving more uh, predictable outcomes and use cases is definitely going to be a blocker that you provide consistent reliable experience and safety to all customers um but the pace is right you know i think that's solvable the this the pace of change is probably like the one blocker sometimes you do invest time and energy having said that you know majority of our engineering today is working on ai wow uh, of our product tech engineering is all ai literally 60% is currently working on generative ai technology institutions and after many years i'm leading that stand up you know from the front every day are you excited about that oh yeah thrilled it's probably the most exciting thing that has happened because it's chaotic is change it's exciting it's got full of possibilities and opportunities for us it's got possibilities how the five be becoming a global company not just an indian company very rapidly and i am like totally in it tell about that what we'll talk about that what what do you mean by global company you're sitting here in bangalore <laughs> well you know ai generative ai is also very very good at culturally transposing and uh, language translating context 
So our advice, you know, that in the former world we were, could only give to Indians, when Indian foods now can be, it's it's much easier for us to do that for people in Porto and Portugal or in in Middle East or in Latin America, uh, which otherwise would have taken a long time. You give know, an to, example. I mean, food is so cultural. I mean, and we are big food, biggest foodies. You know, like probably. Uh, you know, you're, 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 you know, for example, say pure vegetarian, I assume, right, brother? So yes. And uh, that, yeah. yeah. So you know, if you want a high protein snack for your evening over here. It it might give you a you know it might give you a local suggestion right we can actually use generative AI to create saying in in Bangalore what's a good high protein snack going to look like it could be chila or something that we can order but if you were in say you know in in Portugal or you know or wherever else right we can use generative AI to come up with a localized suggestion there itself say it's a cheese or the right format of you know whatever the local food is uh, and and that can be made contextually if you were in in somewhere in Argentina for example. And it can be that that snack can be given as a suggestion in local language, can be you know can be there in front of you when you need it, given your context. Wow. So, this level of translation and transposition of advice was very hard earlier on. We would have to build these databases. We'd have to verify these databases. Now you can kind of go with it on the fly. It's good for um, some parts of the world more than other parts of the world, but the parts of the world it's good at, it's absolutely brilliant at. So potentially, I could like you could order from a Swiggy in in Argentina in Buenos Aires to get me that snack. Absolutely, if I'm sitting there. A hundred percent. In fact, that's what we're building. I mean, we want you to be able to get that high protein snack with Swiggy in India and the local person, you know, to get it from like a DoorDash in California or whoever the local provider is, Dalabat in in like you know in in Abu Dhabi. So, wow. And that's what we're hoping to render for all these customers with all their integrations in their local languages. That's the vision with which Healthify is trying to. That would be it's very powerful. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. So, just a little bit of a longer term question: like, how would, with all of this, how would AI change your business? What do you, what what will it look like in in three years in your the new AI powered Healthify Me or Healthify Me or AI or whatever you're going to call it? Healthify itself would be, in my view, be a lot more productized, a uh, lot more self service in that sense, because our AI will be doing a lot more heavy lifting. You can uh, ask it anything and give you all kinds of meal planning and suggestions. And our coaches will take a more overarching motivation and accountability role. Uh, more people can have access to coaching because it'll be at a lower, more affordable price point than it is today. It'll be global in its design, in its context, in its customer adoption. It should be in multiple countries with a lot of integrations. Um, Healthify is known for tracking very actively, right? Calories, nutrition. I think Healthify's tracking will shift to more passive, whether it is integrations with the Apple Health of the world or photo-based solutions. And our focus and insights will be a lot more uh, active. So we'll, we'll advice and insights will what will take the primary role and active data and data tracking will probably be more passive. You know, and, and we look forward to generating and creating uh, personalized solutions, highly personalized, customized solutions in the form of paths or otherwise that will navigate our customers from the current journey to the wherever they want to get to. Super cool. Here's a fun question. If Chad GPT was an employee yeah. of your company, how much would you pay? The real question is how much would, would he pay me? <laughs> because I am focusing so much on training <laughs> so many generative AIs, technologies right now, right. fixing, tooling, solutioning, and the cutting edge. You know, that frankly, and, and I'm working so hard because of chat GPT that you know that better be paying me Sam Altman if you're listening please uh, write a check I owe you <laughs> to me um, but no but really I mean the thing with generative AI overall as a firm we probably being 2x as productive so you know the as a good businessman I should at least pay 10% of that yes. so <laughs> you know so $20 a month dollars <laughs> <laughs> a month and at least sounds like a bargain <laughs> so um, just the last couple of questions uh if this was, let's say, 2024 uh, September, we're having this conversation, or 2026 September, three years later, what do you think the world will look like? I think the pace of innovation is certainly going to exponentially increase, honestly. Um, you know, the, there'll be good, there'll be good and there'll be bad as part of it. I think the, the bad can be, you know, I think there'll be proliferation of lots and lots and lots of content and availabilities, right? It'll be like, app creation on steroids uh, or content creation on steroids for anything you want there'll be like a billion service providers and 999 million of them will be AI powered or content powered so I think we have to find a new way of discerning what's great and what's not so good 
um, for us to consume, whether it's apps or contents, it'll just be, it'll be thousands of uh, you know, innovators out there using generative AI to build companies, content, businesses, apps, and other things. So it'll get more competitive, but it'll also create a lot of noise for customers, and we'll have to, as a society, come up with solutions that make it less noisy to discern what's good, what's bad. So it'll be interesting to see how we do that. Um, the good, on the other hand, is that I think there was a lot of premium to entrepreneurs being given to um, the ability to execute. You know, we always said, right, like the entire thing lies in execution. Ideas to bahut hai, execution is where it's at. I think it will shift the balance from executors to dreamers more so. I think that's that'll be a nice shift. That'll be a nice shift. Like if you can dream it, a large part of it you can assume will get executed. So dreaming will therefore be on premium. Can you be creative? Can you be dream? Can you dream well? Will be will be uh, stronger as an aptitude or as a, as a winning criteria. Which I think is also a fair criteria. So you know, you just because you have more money or resources. Will not be as will not will you'll not win as much as if you have a very creative solution to the whole thing, and so you'll see creativity really proliferate. You'll see creative thinkers really find of finally kind of getting their due. Um, you know, as I think one of the the chief strategy officers of Adobe or someone said, and I was in a conference in in the U.S. at that. You know, like suddenly the gravity might shift from engineers to designers. <laughs> you know, uh, around the product managers, which is interesting. But I do think that will be a creative world that we're moving towards. Um, I'm excited about the applications and knowledge that it will open up. You know, because of AI in the last five years, we've discovered 99% um, of all the exoplanets that we are aware of, for example, right? And so I'm ex excited about the un uncovering of, in of ideas of information. We're entering a very new level of innovation and information age as we speak, which is going to fundamentally revolutionize and redefine what it means to be human. So, I'm excited about that. That's a very creative answer. I've not heard that. That's, a, <laughs> that's that's exciting actually to be to be living in a world where you know a little bit less grunge and more dreaming. Yeah. Um. Last question. So you are an icon in the in the entrepreneur world. And I think um, I'm like icon. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're all cons, but at different levels. I I <laughs> con who I? I was going from there. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, who am I? But anyway, yes. <laughs> but. Um, what, what would you tell uh, you know the other you know the fellow entrepreneurs in the ecosystem because you've been experimenting and spending a, a lot of resources and time uh, I know various other entrepreneurs have but people have are dabbling with it to different degrees mm -hmm. right what would be your uh, you know you're a practitioner you run a, you're running a business a huge business uh, how would what, what would you what would you suggest to, to other entrepreneurs well, look I think the short answer is that if you haven't Please start taking it very seriously. Um, anything to do with AI, with innovation, around generative AI, etc. This is the long-term bet. This is going to massively revolutionize your industry in, in some way or the other, much like tech did or IT did at some point, or electricity did that before that. And I would start to read, analyze, spend, invest personal time and effort behind it. I know many founders who have just kind of sent mails that is very important, we must do it, but are not doing much about it. And then there's a class of founders taking it personally as a CEO mission. I would really encourage people to do the second because that's what will build long-term defense and moat around being competitive and being ahead of other others out there who are out there to dethrone you, right? Uh, but the the, the 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 sort of slightly more nuanced or long-term answer is this: generally, as a good it poses a a good introspection, I think, for founders to to really look inwards and and think about who you are. You know, and, and truly, con ho tum, I con, <laughs> con ho tum, why did you start your company? Right? Is it to, I mean, if it was to truly innovate, disrupt, create, then there is no better platform than Generative AI provides you. And so you should totally jump at it. Um, you know, if it was to build and manage um, a sustainable business that has probably hit some scale, then of course that's what you've achieved and that's where you should be at. Um, but if it is the former, then I think this is the best opportunity, or the best uh, poll that has ever been given to any founder. You should totally like pole vault. Pole vaulting sounds good. So on that note, uh, thanks very much for your time. Of course. Yeah. Yeah.